Hello, church family. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. We know there's a lot going on in life. In fact, if you're watching this later, right now we're in March of 2020, mm -hmm. and um, everybody's concerned about COVID-19, but the principles we're going to share actually apply to a lot of different areas. And so we just want for you to know that no matter what day or age you're listening this to this too, it applies to every crisis, every plague, every sickness, every disease, and every circumstance in your life, you can still apply these principles in the Word of God to your life. Amen. And so uh, get your Bibles out. We're also going to be receiving communion today. Go ahead and get you something out to receive communion with. Okay. And then we want you to read along with us. Also, if you get something out of this, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. And then also please share it. Share it on Facebook. Share it. Uh, text it. There's a lot of different ways. But we believe these things will help a lot of different people. Okay? Yes. So let's go ahead and open our Bibles to Mark chapter 1. And we're going to be starting in verse 40. So we're here in verse 40. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, this is a problem I think that, and we run into it actually a lot, is, is that people just don't know the will of God. And people don't understand about how much that can rob you right. of what Jesus would want to do in your life. Right. And, and a lot of times that comes from us judging ourselves as opposed to looking at his compassion and who he is. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. Or, or his word. His word actually tells us categorically. It settles what it, everything. Yeah, it, it really does settle everything. Now, this guy had enough sense that when he wanted to know what Jesus' will was, he came to him. And he asked him. And he asked him. And so when you, when you get into the word, you have to make a decision that this word is his will. And maybe we'll go over that tomorrow. <clears throat> but you need to understand that there's a lot of things not going to happen in your life that God actually wants to do if you don't settle the will of God question. Yes. Because notice what happens here. And a lot of people miss this. In verse 41, it says, Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him. But nothing happened. Why? Because he hasn't settled the willingness question yet. Right. He still doesn't know. Jesus might be touching him, but he still doesn't know whether or not Jesus is willing to heal him. Right. This is the reason that when people say, especially in regards to healing and health, is when they say, if the Lord wills, I'll be healed, that, that's never going to work. Because it didn't work for this guy. He came to Jesus and said, well, if you're willing, right. you can make me clean. And Jesus touches him and nothing happens. Right. Not a single thing. Right. Because the guy already believed Jesus had the power to do it, but he didn't know that he had the will to do it. That, that's exactly right. And when you don't understand that, it doesn't work. Right. And so he goes on here and he says this. And it notice what, what happens because it, it references this and makes this clear. It says, he stu uh, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Now notice the exact next verse. It says this, verse 42, as soon as he had spoken, mm -hmm. immediately he received it. See, he, it's making a point. Right. He had to wait till he knew. Right. He wasn't going to receive till he knew. Right. And we have to settle that in our hearts, mm -hmm. that once we see it in the Word of God, then we know that that is the will of God for our lives. Right. And, and understand, this is the same way in your life. Unless you settle the willingness issue mm -hmm. in your own heart, Jesus can be standing right there with you. He can reach out and touch you, and nothing is going to happen because you have to settle the willingness question. And if you're, if you're thinking that Jesus' willingness is based on your worthiness, then you're going to be tripped up every time. Every person that Jesus healed in the, in, in the accounts in the Gospels, every person was not a born-again child of God. And they weren't a member of the family. But you are righteous because of your membership within the family, because you have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you're ultimately, you're righteous because he says you are. Exactly. And he, if he calls you righteous, who are you to say you're not? Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to go ahead and receive communion today, and we're going to try to do this as often as we possibly can. But I want you to understand something about the communion cup. And when Abraham, when God made promise to Abraham, right, 
And he promised him some really wonderful things. But Abraham had a question. How shall I know mm -hmm. that this will happen? And God's response was, prepare the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the blood. And see, that's the same thing about the, what Jesus said. This is the new covenant. This is an ironclad agreement that can never be changed between you and I. Right. And it is in the blood of God's own son. Mm -hmm. So again, this goes back to the willingness issue. Right. Is God willing? Well, if he wasn't, he shouldn't have sworn in the blood of his own son. Right? right? Because all of the promises of God are in yes Jesus are yes and amen. And so... You know, uh, a good friend of ours, Randy Gadson, uh, at one of the churches that we're uh, with, he, he said this at communion, made me think about this, that this should have been me. But thank God it wasn't mm -hmm. because he did it for us. Right. You know, it should have been you. If worthiness is an issue, okay, great. It should have been you. But it wasn't you right. because he took it for you. And his body was broken for you. Yes. You do not have to tolerate your body being broken because his body was broken so that yours didn't need to be. Yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We have before us the broken body of our Lord Jesus. We put ourselves in remembrance of the price that was paid that we could be healed and restored. And we take this now and honor the Lord Jesus and the sacrifice that he's made in Jesus' name. Now, if you didn't have your elements ready, just stop the video, go back. You can do this right there with us. That's one of the benefits of video. video. Now, this is the blood of the new covenant, the blood of God's own Son, Lord, we thank you that if we ever wanted to know how willing you were to help us, this cup tells us because you were willing to shed your blood for us, to give your life for us. And if you were willing to give your life, then we can have life. Therefore, right here and right now, Lord, we honor the blood of Jesus, the blood that has cleansed us of all unrighteousness, that it has made us the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, as in it has empowered us to receive from you. So we take of the blood of Jesus. It's settled. You are redeemed Amen. from every sickness and every disease. Amen. You are redeemed from all, not just COVID-19, but from every sickness, every pain. And you need to start telling your body that, no, the blood guarantees my redemption. We've got more to say on this subject. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, Jesus, Jesus is risen and victory is assured.